Hello, welcome to the Hire Rockstar Talent Podcast. Today we're going to talk about reviews and why I think reviews are so stupid. Annual performance reviews for our employees. But before we get into that, I um, want to talk to you about a new tool that we created um, that will really help you understand your turnover and what the employee revolving door actually costs your business in dollars and cents. Not bullshit percentages like every all the gurus talk about but the actual dollars and we break it down for you so i want you to go to our website hirerockstartalent.com it's free to use check it out and it'll really give you a deep dive in your business about the things that are on the PL, what things aren't on the PL, and really everything that's encompassing into uh, employee turnover and uh, disengagement. And I think it's, it'll really be a mind blowing experience for you. Other than that, I want you to hit subscribe, follow us um, and check out this podcast. So as we keep doing more um, awesome podcasts like this one, you can uh, hang out with us and you can see everything we're doing. So, all right, so reviews and why I think reviews are so stupid. So what is, a, what is a review? What is an employee annual review? Well, I think the word annual means once a year, right? That in itself is kind of stupid. So that means we only talk to our employees once a year about specific things. So the review, the, the, the employee review is a scheduled meeting. So it's not just something that just happens on a whim. You actually schedule it. You take some time to prepare for it and it's a check-in. Right? It's a check-in between management and leadership. Kind of you want to get an understanding of opportunities. It's a time to connect, communicate, talk about performance, talk about performance goals and objectives and opportunities of how you can get better and how you can align with the company. Right? So when you say it that way, my God, it makes perfect sense. Right? Like, like everybody should be doing this. But a lot of people aren't doing it. So keep in mind that poor communication is a major reason why people leave their jobs. In fact, according to On The Line, which is Toast POS system, 81% of the workers that they've surveyed um, put honest feedback, communication, transparency at the top of their must-have lists uh, when they're going to look for a job and work for a company. Some of the positive things about reviews, some more positive things is when you take the time to sit and talk to someone, you develop a trust. Right? You develop a rapport um, with your employees. By taking that time um, and speaking with people, you gain this critical, this critical insight that is so hard to get any other way besides just sitting and having a conversation. Now, when you take the time to have this, this level of conversation with your employee, both you and your employee will feel so good after that you did it. You'll have a better relationship. You'll have a better le level of commitment and trust and engagement because of it. When you take this time, employee satisfaction can only go up. Even if some of the conversation isn't 100% positive and you have to talk about some hard things, you know, but you have this time that where you can connect and, and give some affirmations and those affirmations are directly linked to productivity, um, which is also linked to higher sales, which is also linked to stronger company culture, which is also linked to a better environment and customer satisfaction. So when you take all this and put it together, you have better cost controls in the business because of it and you have more profit on the bottom line. Now, this is the data that the gurus, the experts are telling you to do annual performance reviews. So it's amazing that with all of this positive stuff, there's still a lot of, a lot of retail and restaurant operators that aren't doing them. If they do do them, this is even worse. They half-assed them, which is kind of demeaning and insulting when you rush through it like you're checking a bunch of boxes. So why? Why, why aren't restaurants doing them? As a restaurateur, we talk about the review. In fact, we a lot of times we talk about it at the hiring part of the hiring process that we'll do a review at this time we'll revisit this at another time but then we push it off we almost push it off we try to kick the can down the road in some aspects hoping that the employee forgets that we were even going to do one and they just kind of go off and it just disappears but there are many employees that chase us down and they push until they can sit down and talk with you which is good right but there's a reason there's a reason why you know, it, it's, an, it's amazing how an employee will push that review. And the reason why is because the culture in this country is that review means raise. Regardless of the things that have gone wrong, the, the money that you've cost the company, regardless of these things, 
there's the largest percentage of employees, review means raise. They want to know what's in it for them, how much they're going to get. Everything else is noise, blah, 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 blah. I don't want to really hear it. I just want to get right to the end. How much am I getting? Go on about my business. Now, there is a percentage of employees that really want the feedback. They really want to get better. They really want to have the conversation. But a majority of the culture in this country is that review means raise and that's it. No one wants to hear anything else and that's a problem. That's a problem because now because the process is so broken and we're not talking about the real things that we need to be talking about to grow and expand people. Yes, we want we want our company um, we, our company has goals and we need great employees to do it. But if we're not having the conversations we need to have with people and we're just pushing off the hard conversations nothing's ever going to get fixed. So what happens is, and the reason why a lot of restaurateurs will kick the can down the road and they'll push off these conversations is because they don't want to have the conversation that they have to have with many employees. They're hard conversations. And many times when an employee goes into a review, they're not going to get the feedback that they think they were going to get, right? So what ends up happening is managers will put it off, put it off, will put it off, and then when they get cornered and they actually have to do it, let's say the employee catches them and says, you know, listen, we said we were going to do a review. I really want to do a review. You know that you've been saying this. Okay, Sally, we're going to do a review on Thursday, one o'clock. Sally shows up on time, one o'clock on Thursday, ready to go. But you've been busy. You have not prepared. And now you're irritated. You're stressed. You're annoyed, right? You have it planned. So now everything that you're going to be talking to Sally about at this review is off the cuff bullshit, or you've gone the other way, right? You've gone the other way where you've created this massive evaluation form with 97 million check boxes. And it's this complicated grade grading al algorithm that, you know, still is a bunch of nonsense and a waste of time and energy. Now, because you're irritated and frustrated in this process, the employee wants to hear one thing. You know this, right? You know the employee just wants to hear, yeah, 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 how much money am I getting? But you're trying to spin the conversation on the fly with no planning to show them the things that they did wrong, right? And you're trying to bring the negatives, but softly, you're trying to bring the negatives to the table and, and the things that they have to hear. Like, and you, you're trying to bring the negatives to the table so you can pitch a case that they don't deserve a raise. Right? Or maybe they, they haven't done the things that they need to do to get more money or expand or, or grow with the company because they haven't done the simple things first. Right? So and when, because we haven't planned it, we're not talking about those things. So what ends up coming out? What ends up coming out is a lot of sarcasm, a lot of comments that have no facts and they're really just speculation. Now, a lot of the comments are probably true. They're probably real things that are happening, but you're trying to grab them out of the air as fast as you can. And the result is the employee leaves offended or heart or demotivated, right? So exactly the whole premise of the positivity of this review process has just gone the other direction. Now, there's another side to this that happens with a lot of leaders. A lot of leaders, because they're short-staffed and they, they're caught now and they have to do this review, they go the other way and they tell the employee what they want to hear, right? They pat the employee on the head, they rub the belly, right? They tell you what you want to hear. Go ahead, little Sally, you got, we're going to give you a little bit more money and all you're doing is compounding the real problem. Sally isn't a performer at that level, but yet you're rewarding her for participation. This is another problem. And we're having this type of conversation because we don't want to face the facts. We don't want to have the conversation that we need to have with people to really grow and expand them. We're not benefiting them at all, right? So how will, will their performance ever benefit us if we're not helping them? So this is the problem. Now, when you do this, you create a much bigger problem. Right? This problem is like the iceberg sitting in the ocean. You only see the tip and then there's all this stuff underneath. So the minute you, hit, you give um, someone who doesn't deserve more money more money, the first thing that they do is they walk out of your office or the space that you're having this review and they're faster than the post office. Telepath, telegraph, tell another employee I got a raise. There's someone in China that immediately knows that that employee got a raise, which means now every other employee in the company is saying to themselves, hey, what about me? I'm better than that idiot, Sally. She's a ding dong. I, I do twice what she does. So I deserve twice the money that she has. So now everybody's coming to you and you've just caused a domino effect. And you've actually, because of your 
you know, wanting to avoid this conversation, you just signed up to have a whole bunch more of them. So because you have no system and process, you've just compounded this problem and you've made the whole thing even worse and more broken than the shit was in the beginning. This is why so many managers are diverting these conversations and they don't want to have them. Now, another thing that they do, which is kind of, kind of cute, right, is they, they create these massive evaluation forms and then they have people evaluate each other. Okay, well, so you got two employees, one's too hard, one's too soft. They're not talking about the things that they should. There's nothing about leadership and qualities and, you know, performance indicators. And it's just two people telling each other that they're either love each other or they're totally horrible. So it's just, it's just not the right approach. It's just another trick and gimmick because you're trying to avoid having the conversation that you could. And the average employee is not capable or has the skill sets to have that type of a level of conversation with somebody else. That's it, they're, right? So, you know, they're just not evaluators. You know, in the event you do create this massive form, you gotta have some systematic approach to it, but you need to sit the employee down and, and do it with them and talk about it. But I really think that the big problem it, it's much deeper. The big problem that's, that's, that's a deeper problem is we're not having healthy conversations all the time with our employees. There aren't healthy conversations that are happening at, at a frequent rate with managers and employees, or those conversations aren't happening about the right things, right? We're not staying in alignment with the right things. So now there's no there's no consistency to the process. So we say annual review, we say once a year, we're gonna do them around this time, but then you know, if we, if we do them in April, then all of a sudden it's May and we haven't done them yet. And, and this is just, and, and it just it spirals and it keeps going year after year after year. So now imagine though, imagine the possibility, if you could deliver this information clearly, if you could deliver the information respectfully and factually and have the conversations that you want to have. Man, that's crazy, right? And imagine if you can do it and give this feedback without being graded like you're in elementary school, right? That would be even better. That would be a win-win for everybody. Let's talk about a better way. Let's talk about three ways that we can do this better. Now, the first thing is goals. We screw this up all the time. When we usually sit down and talk to our employees about goals, we're really talking about the company's goals and what they can do to help the company achieve their goals. We want to do so much in sales. We want to sell so much product. We want to do this. We need this. Imagine the possibility if you could deliver this information, the review information, the real conversation that you have to have with your employees, but you could do it clearly. You could do it respectfully. You could do it factually, right? You could give feedback without being graded like you're in elementary school. That would be something different, right? What if the company's goals could align with the employee's goals so everybody could win? What if we followed up with an action plan that may or may not have anything to do with compensation? Maybe we revisit that because we've identified a few things that you have to do and then we go attack them and then we regroup and do it again. Sounds better, right? Let's talk about the three things that just don't work and a better way to engage your employees. Because really what we're after with this process is to extract the ultimate level of engagement and check in all the boxes that we need to so an employee can grow and expand. Now, the first thing that I want to attack here is goal setting. Goal setting ends up, when not done correctly, just becomes such bullshit, right? So the standard is to take a current assessment of last year's goals and then see where, you know, where things went. And then now the new goals are set strategically based off what you did or didn't accomplish from last year, right? But how can, how the heck can that happen when a majority of retail and restauranters, uh, restaurant employees weren't there last year? They may have just started. They may have only been here a short amount of time or they came in mid year. So there is no year to year review that we can do. Right? So now that whole process and that goal finding session is useless, right? When really what we need to do is we need to find out what are the things that they want? What are their personal and professional goals? So that's the catalyst, right? If we can find that out, now we can take a look that are the actions, are the things that they do daily in line with that goals. And I'll give you, I'll give you an example. So those goals need to be 
nurtured. They need to be paid attention to. They needed to be reminded of them, right? You said this, but you're doing this. That way you can, the true coaching is by course correcting people and say, hey, you said this, is what you're doing over there in line with this? You know, what usually happens when people set goals, what they find out is they, they set the goal too high. Uh, I wanna make a million dollars this year. Well, have you ever made $10,000 before? No? Well, maybe you should start with $10,000 and then we can go to 20 before, there's a whole long journey before you get to making a million dollars. But when you set your goal to make a million dollars this year and you haven't even made $10,000 yet, um, you're gonna be very frustrated uh, and disappointed and you're gonna give up. So that's what you don't want. So, you know, part of this process too is we have to make sure that the goals are realistic, right? Um, <clears throat> and this is, this is what this conversation should be about. Not this checklist shenanigan nonsense, but it, this is the real getting into the conversation and really learning about someone and understanding how they tick. Um, that's why we need to understand both the personal and the professional goals.